So today, Lloyd and I are walking down to the pub from Whitchurch Canal, and the conversation of topic today is about mental health. Something that hits home for me, and probably hits home to a lot of you guys out there. So we've done a lot of videos in the past about cancer, PTSD. Um, but yeah, this is, a, this is a big talk, this is a mega talk for me and for a lot of you out there. And I'll talk to you about that today and the reason why it means so much to me. And yeah, we'll go from there. Again, we're going to talk about mental health and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my story as well. Um, people know me as a personal trainer and they normally know me as a happy, go bubbly kind of guy. But I haven't always been that way. Um, I'll talk a little bit about growing up first of all. When I was growing up and I was younger, my mum was in an awful place, a really sad place. Um, and she won't, hopefully she won't mind me talking about this because a bit like me, I think that if she could help anyone struggling from a mental health episode, then she would. Um, growing up in my teenage years, my mum suffered from really bad depression, awful depression. It was, it was sad to see and I didn't, me and dad didn't know how to cope. Um, there were several occasions where my mum sadly tried to take a life. Um, and it was traumatic. It was very, very traumatic growing up. And I didn't know how to cope. I, first of all, I was too young to understand it. It didn't make any sense to me at all. It didn't understand why anyone in this world would want to take that life, take their life, sorry. But as you grow up and you mature, things change and you get a better understanding of life and how great life can be, but also how, how tragic life can be as well. Um, See, so yeah, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my mum and then I'll talk to you about me. And generally this talk is about mental health and how mental health is, is so important. Um, so when my mum suffered from depression, she was put into hospital. She was put into a hospital and me and dad went to visit mum and she, she luckily made it through her attempts to end her life. She luckily thought, which was fortunate enough to do so. Um, but yeah, dad and I went to visit her in hospital and talking to her in hospital was awful, absolutely awful. Bearing in mind, I was only a teenager and I couldn't understand it. I was crying my eyes out, literally crying my eyes out. Um, but because of her state of mind, she couldn't understand it. She couldn't understand why I was so upset. Um, so yeah, that's how bad it can get. That's really how, how bad life can get when it comes to depression. Uh, and that's all I'm gonna talk about my mum for now. But again, the reason why I'm saying this is that I know that my mum would do everything she could to help someone go, going through a rough time, going through what she's been through. So that, that, that's it for now, that's it about my mum. And then I'll talk to you about my brother and me. Okay, so now I'm gonna to talk to you about me. So again, um, as some of you are aware, I'm a personal trainer and I study sports sciences at the University of Birmingham. And when I was there, I learned all the things about anatomy and physiology and exercise. But the thing that interested me the most was psychology. Exercise psychology, the psychology of mind, behavioral medicine, things like that. And that's why I excelled at uni, that's what I was always good at. And that was in my 20s. When I was a bit older and I graduated, um, I was working in the fitness industry in Chester and I was playing rugby in Birmingham, playing quite, quite a good level in Birmingham and I would travel down to Birmingham a weekend on a Saturday, come back up to Chester and work my normal job. And it was a, uh, things were getting really busy in work, things were getting really busy and rugby was good and we were winning games but I was getting knocked out quite regularly and having head injuries. Anyway, things would change very quickly for me. Things got out of hand very quickly and I didn't realise what was going on. At the age of 22, unknown to me, I actually ended up having a manic ep episode. Um, I can talk about it now. But yeah, I suffered from mania at the age of 22. Um, what happened, again, at the age of 22, I actually ended up in hospital. And I couldn't quite believe it because 
My dad tried to keep me calm and, he, and what I thought it was, I thought it was like a, a brain a brain search to see what was going on in my brain because I've been knocked out so many times and I thought it was a rugby related injury. However, it turned out to be something much different. So, like I said, I ended up in hospital, which was awful. It was awful for everyone to see. When I was in hospital, I didn't understand what was going on and doctors started trying to restrain me, okay? Um, doctors started trying to force feed me meds and because I thought it was all a bit of a joke, I was spitting the meds out. I was saying, what on earth are you doing? I just want my brain scanned to see what's going on in my brain because again, I thought it was a rugby injury. Things got worse. I ended up smashing stuff up and ended up in a prison cell. I ripped out fire alarms, I ripped out air fans, I created weapons and I threatened to kill people unless I got my dad. That's how bad it got at the age of 22 with me. Okay, so I'm now 25 years of age, okay? I'm a bit more mature. I understand about a bit more now who I am and what happened to me and the reasons why it happened. It still hurts, you can see it hurt from the last clip, how much it hurt to talk about it. And at the age of 22, when I came out of hospital and I was better, I, was, I felt better in myself because of medication, etc. I was ashamed. I was, it was embarrassing for me. I didn't, it was, I felt like no one understood me. Like no one understood how bad I had it. And I was, I was like, I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to go out. I wanted to, I want to stay in bed all day. Didn't want to work, didn't want to see anyone because I was embarrassed about what happened. And this is why people need to speak up. This is why people need to talk about mental health. Because so many families suffer, they, would, they need that help. They need, the, they need someone to talk to and they need that therapy. So anyway, like I said, I'm 25 and now I can talk about it. Because I can, I can talk about it. And this is the thing as well, what I would say is if you've just got over, or you're just, yeah, you've just got over a mental health episode, you're not the only one. You are not the only one, okay? There are other people that have been through it. And at the time you might feel embarrassed, you might feel like you've got nobody to talk to, okay? And that's normal, that is normal. It happened to me at 22, it happened to me. But all I can say is that life does get better, all right? Life does get better. Um, although you will still struggle, you'll still struggle with your illness a little bit. There's medication that can help you, okay? And you can still lead a normal life. It doesn't restrict you from leading a normal life. I can still go out, I can still party, and I can carry on my life as normal. Unfortunately, we're now in a position where some people can't carry on their lives due to mental health. And that is sad. That's what's really sad. And that's why I, I believe in it so much and I want to talk about it today so it hits home. And just if anyone, if, if anyone sees this video and they've just recovered, well, going through a bad time or recovering from a bad time, I want you to know that things will get better. So yeah, you've heard a bit about me. You heard about how at 22, I had a manic episode and I actually had one a bit more recently, which was much more mild, but it was, it was much less severe than when I was younger. But fortunately, I was in a position to realize what it was um, and feel it coming up again, and I've got it sorted. Again, some people are not that fortunate. Some people don't know what it is, and sometimes they resort to the worst, and that's, that's awful. But again, when it comes to mental health, I hear so many terms thrown around. Oh, you know, she's depressed you know, he's bipolar, or he's manic, things like that. And the thing is, until you've actually been there, until you've actually experienced that illness, you don't understand it. And I hear some people say, oh, you can't trust that guy, he's bipolar, like he's up and down like, day in, day out. Um, and that might just be stress. That might not be an illness, okay? Um, blokes go through hard times, they work hard, and they have their ups and downs. That doesn't necessarily mean that they are actually bipolar. If you have, a mental health illness, it is real, it is serious. It's not a joke, okay? Um, if you are depressed, if you are manic, or if you have bipolar, there's no joke about it. You need help. You need a therapist or people to talk to. You need the love and support of your family, of course, as always. And then you do need medication. As much as you might not want it, you need that medication to get that chemical imbalance right in your brain so that you can lead a happy and normal life. So we're coming to the end of the video before Lloyd and I go to the pub. But yeah, just one last, one last piece for me. And that is that 
it doesn't matter, well, whatever you're going through in life, whether you feel like it's too much, whether you feel like everything is too much, just please, please try and find help. Um, I've been there before, okay, when I was, I was on holiday in Spain, and when I was really ill, I had a panic attack, all right? I was on the top floor balcony of a hotel, and I actually thought how fun it would be to jump. I really did, I mean that. Um, and it nearly ended there for me, okay? But all I can say is it doesn't matter how, well, whatever you're going through in life, it might seem awful, it might seem rock, rock bottom, okay? But this is what this is about. This is about raising awareness of mental health. And there are people out there that can help. And yeah, please try and pull through it and speak to people, open up. Because in work now, because I've been through something, if people suffer from a mental health illness, I can talk to them. But unfortunately, I'm not in a position to save everyone. I wish I could, but I'm not in that position. So yeah, just please try, keep going. Think of the positives in life and do your best to pull through it. So the last bit for me and Lloyd, just got to the pub. All I wanted to say was the mind is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing, but it can play tricks on you. It can play real tricks on you. All I would say is that you can still enjoy your life, no, one, no, one, no matter what your mind's telling you. It might be, they might be telling you one thing and it might be a good thing. And unfortunately in this world, sometimes is a horrible thing. It can be telling you horrible things. But all I like to say to finish this, this video is you're worthy of this world. You're worthy of this life. It doesn't matter what, what you might be thinking or what people might be saying to you. You can still live in this world and you've got to, all you've got to do is turn negative things, things that your mind's telling you, things that people are saying about you or to your face. Turn those negative things into positives. Keep going, just keep going and believe in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself. Cheers.